Sophie to Meet, one of Britain's finest actors. Sean Hertzbeiner, you saw him in PBS, in our Claudius. You, there will never be another Caligula after you. You are the Caligula. That is what they said after the first one. Oh. <laughs> no, take it from me. There will never be another Caligula. No one can do that role again after you've done it. Visually, it's in my mind for the rest of my life. There will never be another Caligula. Then, Midnight Express, Oscar nomination. Then, that's your cue. <laughs> that's your cue. That's, don't you know, you're, in, you're in television now. This is the way they see you, guys. The Elephant Man. The Elephant Man. Now, tell me this about The Elephant Man. I saw it on Broadway without makeup. Mm -hmm. Then I saw it recently on television without makeup. You did it with makeup. Why? Well, I have to explain something about that because um, uh, the thing about the, the film and, and the play were com completely different. I mean, they have no connection whatsoever, apart from the source material. Um, and I think quite a lot of people don't realize that. They think that, that uh, one is a, an offshoot of the other one. Mm -hmm. They weren't, because I mean, it was uh, the people that were writing the, the screenplay uh, were writing it at probably much the same time as Bernard Pomerantz is writing the play. And uh, the conception is just completely different. I've seen the play, and I think the play is terrific, but um, in, in its own right. But it's totally different, totally different um, approach to to uh, Christopher and, and Eric Bergen's. How could they do that to your beautiful face and body? That's a kind uh, thing to uh, say. Uh, uh, How could they do that? How could they do that to you? Well, nature did it to John Merrick, so <laughs> I suppose it's not very unreasonable that art should do it to me. You're so nice and slender. What do you do? Me? Oh. Yes. I walk. You walk? Mm hmm That's it? You mm -hmm. can stay nice and slender by you walking? I get out of bed in the morning as well. And that's it? No regimented, regimented plan? No, I sometimes say hello. I wave. You, know, so you just don't eat much then, John. No. It's like I used to watch Brad Davis when we were doing Midnight Express, and Brad Davis would, before every take, would go, you know, all this yeah. kind of press-ups and so on. So I thought one day, well, what am I going to do? So I, mean, I thought, so I went like this. <laughs> <laughs> and eventually, Brad came over and said, what are you doing? I said, I'm doing my exercises. Oh, yes. Well, he, you look like you're rough and tumble in the movie that he's done recently. It's Walt Disney's Night Crossing. And if you read the newspapers a couple of years ago, back about 1979, I remember reading the story of a German family who had escaped from across the border in a hot air balloon. thought, isn't that interesting? But heard nothing more about it. Well, Disney gets a hold of it. It's this guy, Gene Alexander, and they do the story. Now, have you ever been in a hot air balloon? Yes, I have. But, but, but uh, after the film was finished. Uh, well, we, we, we were in a, a, a mighty high crane, but um, obviously we, uh, there isn't an insurance company in the world that would um, of, 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 of allowed us to go up. Anyway, you couldn't shoot it. You couldn't oh. have shot it because, you know, because the, the hot air balloon goes with the wind. Um, yes. And it, it literally does that. I understand you had to take, you had to have seven balloons to shoot this. Uh, we had a lot, yes, mm -hmm. we did. But I mean, they used three. I mean, the real story had three. Yeah. They, one got burnt, one came down in, in the zone, and um, one was actually made it. John, in real life, could you have done it? Could you have taken a hot air balloon ride as this man did? Would you have done that risk route? Because that th this thing behind us wasn't supposed to fly. The FAA would not have passed. It would not have passed muster. Could you have done that? Well, I, I guess um, pterodactyls weren't really supposed to fly either, but um, but they did. I don't know about myself. I think not. I think probably I would have. Uh, if I if talking about me personally, I think probably I somehow I would have adapted to the society where I came from. But I mean, who can tell? Yeah. Who can tell? Under the circumstances, it all depends. Under the circumstances. One last thing. How do you as an actor cry, John? You do that. You cry in this film. How do you cry? Yeah, feel a little pain. Personal pain? Yeah. Or the pain yeah, from the character? Sure. Sure. But that's, um, that's the game. It's a big game. Is this all a big game? No, that's the business of being a, of being a performer. You know, 
uh, if, I was, if I was a mathematician, then you would ask me, be asking me, the, the similar question would be, how do you solve that equation? Mm -hmm. The answer is, I'm a mathematician. How do I cry? The answer is, I'm an actor. No, you do it well. You do it very well. I'm, I'm proud to have met you, John. <laughs> Thank you. John Hope is his name, and this is his game, Showbiz. And it's Walt <laughs> Disney's movie, Night Crossing. 10-11 continues.